Okie dokie. Welcome to the Dave Nordahl Show, episode number one. This show is going to be a podcast. I don't know how many days I'm going to do it, uh, or days a week I'm going to do it, but this is the first one. Um, let's just make sure I'm actually streaming. Yes, I am. And, um, oh, crap, I forgot. So, yes, welcome to the uh, Dave Nordahl Show. This is the first episode. Uh, it's also going to be available as a podcast and uh, whatnot. So, um, okay, a couple of uh, somewhat of important announcements. I have joined Vlair, and I'm going to be talking about this uh, particular little article. And if you would like to hear my thoughts on it, then um, you're going to have to sign up. For Vlair, link to my channel on Vlair is in the description below. Okay. So, let's do that. Let's get rid of this. And we will start the episode with everybody's favorite dim-witted college dipshit, AOC. Then we're going to move on to Time Magazine giving Greta Thunberg the Person of the Year Award. I'll just give you my thoughts on that and basically how fucking meaningless that award has gotten. Then we're going to be going through the um, each of the basically the big the three Democratic candidates that matter: Bernie Sanders, uh, Joe Biden, and Elizabeth Warren's website. It's, holy shit! We have exactly zero way to implement it and zero way to enforce it. And if there's time, I will deal with the fact that Representative Al Green, you know him, he's the squinty-eyed black dude from California that just has been trying to impeach Trump since he won the goddamn 2016 election, and he's not giving it up. So, first story of the day, AOC. Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez has stark opinions on U.S. paid family leave. Puppies aren't separated from their moms until eight weeks. Less than that is thought to be harmful or abusive. One of the most common lengths for U.S. paid family leave is six weeks. Well, already! Can somebody just give this bitch a coloring book and tell her to shut the fuck up? When puppies are separated from their moms, generally that's forever. Nobody would separate a six-week-old baby from its mother forever. And again, how long are they supposed to be out of work? You do know, just because you had a baby doesn't mean the goddamn doesn't mean the goddamn business that you work at ends. And she wants a ridiculously long amount of time. So yes, when we let the market decide on parental leave, the market treats people worse than dogs. Well, you can always find a job with a fucking company that will give you whatever leave you want. You can always do it. Cortez spoke about the subject earlier in the day during the House Oversight and Reform Committee. Why the fuck is the government need to get involved in this? Let the market decide. I have to disclose I have a stake in this fight. When I was first starting my office here, I decided to offer 12 weeks of paid family leave. And in my first 11 or 12 months in office, you haven't been in even 11 months. Um, there have been six pregnancies in my congressional office. Six folks have taken pregnancy or medical leave. Five of them men in my office. New fathers are folks taking medical leave, taking care of their families. So you've had a bunch of people not in your office doing their job. This has been a very important dynamic. Many of the men in our office have testified how after the birth of their children and supporting their partners, how critical it's been for them to be here. Yeah, um, paternity leave should not be a thing. Okay, you have a kid, take the weekend off, get your ass back to work on Monday. You're the man. Okay, somebody's got to be making some money. The Congresswoman from the Bronx submitted two testimonies of her staffers on the impact of paid family leave 
uh, highlighting the positive impacts of paid family leave for men on new mothers. I have no idea what the hell that was saying there. Vicky Shabo, a senior fellow at New America, a think tank focusing on public policies, told that six to eight weeks is the most common length of paid family leave. She agreed with Ocasio-Cortez's points. The sentiments that your staffers have articulated accurately uh, on a panel I moderated on the release of our men and care report men in paid leave specifically. There were three dads who talked about the cultural expectations that dad wouldn't take leave. Dad doesn't have to! Okay? Dad doesn't fucking have to! Dad can get his ass back to work! Uh, they were able to negotiate and cobble together. One of them had a wife that had a horrible labor and a baby that was in NICU. That's a little different. And he was back to work within a week. Somebody's got to make money! I mean, the bills don't stop just because you had a fucking kid. She later added the policy is a precondition. We have to design policies that have wage replacement that's high enough so that men can afford to take leave. Oh, great. So I, I, as a business owner, have to fucking flip the bill just because some bitch in my office decided to crap out a kid. Why should I pay 100% of their wages? And what if they're hourly? We also need a culture and a sort of discussion and men standing up and say, leave taking is important to me and here is why. And that has allowed me to not only bond with my child, but also support my partner. Good. Support them by getting back to work. Uh, AOC's line of questioning with Shabo highlighted the majority of people in the U.S. do not have access to paid family leave. Most companies I've worked for have paid family leave. In fact, less than two in ten of all civilian workers had access to paid family leave as of March 2018. Well, good thing it's not March 2018. I, 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 I don't know where the hell they're getting this stat from either. Uh, do we know how long uh, puppies are allowed to stay with their moms after the dog has been for eight weeks? Blah, blah, blah. And so when that happens... Apparently, she's saying that businesses failed to treat people with dignity and with basic respect because that's all she's got is just fucking feelings. I think it's our job as the public to redefine the rules of society. Um, Rachel Gresler, a labor expert at the... Where did she say that she needed... Okay, uh, I'll, I'll get to the response... AOC advocated for a minimum of three months of paid family leave. Idelically, she thinks they should have six to 12 months of paid family leave. A year off just because you had a fucking kid? One, no business is going to be able to run like that. Two, do you have any idea how hard it's going to be to get back to work after taking a half a year off? Three months is too fucking long. Take your six weeks and get back to work. Jesus Christ. Or here's a thought. Maybe mom should quit her fucking job. Um, but here's the, you know, do you have any, and where are we going to find all these employees? I mean, if it's 12 months of paid leave, the company's going to look for, for any excuse to fire you or no woman in the age range of being able to give birth is going to get a job. This will completely destroy any chance of the wage gap ever being closed. The earnings gap ever being closed. And again, do you know the chaos that would create? How the fuck could you? I mean, say, say a woman's leading a project at, at some business. She gets pregnant, has a kid. And now she's gone for six months? What's the company supposed to do? Just sit in its ass and twiddle its thumbs? What if she's the only one that can really do it? Where, where are we supposed to find these mythical workers? It's like the idiots that think a 20-hour work week is possible. Like, I can't remember which socialist group it was. 
but they said we should only work six months out of the year and 20 hours a week. And kids can fill in the various position. Really? Really? Kids can kids can be lawyers and, and kids looking for their summer job can be surgeons. You know, there's a lot of jobs that not a, there's not enough people to do. Especially when half your fucking staff is gone for a year because they decided to crap out a kid. And what happens if the woman in the 12 month period has gets pregnant again and has another kid? Does the clock start again? So theoretically, she could be taking, if she's got four kids, not have to work for four years, then you expect her to go back to work at that company who has changed how much in that amount of time? Anyway, uh, this uh, woman from the Heritage Foundation, again, I'm not the biggest fan of the Heritage Foundation, as a woman who has given birth to six kids, I find being compared to a dog with puppies incredibly offensive. And in regards to more serious discussions of how we can help families that don't have access to paid family leave, again, almost every company offers leave. AOC presented misleading data. No shit she did. Failed to recognize the basic economic principles as well as ignored the evidence of government paid family leave programs across the world. So, yeah, I mean, this would, once again, AOC just proves that, A, women belong in the kitchen making sandwiches, and you really have should be, you really should be forced before you run for Congress. You actually have to open up a business. Because this dimwit, who has never had to balance a budget, never had to fucking figure out where the goddamn money's coming from, just decided out of the blue to go, well, it should be, it should be, um, 12 months of family leave. What the, get the fuck out of here, lady. Okay, and in other news, this was blowing up all over Twitter. Greta Thunberg, the little 16-year-old dimwit from Sweden who thinks the world is going to end next week, has been named... Times person of the goddamn year. I mean, the time person of the year award is if world's greatest grandpa was an actual award, it'd be about a half a step above that. It's not exactly the most prestigious thing on the planet, but whatever prestige it had um, is now dead. What exactly has... Greta Thunberg done for the world except annoy the shit out of anyone, everyone. She has no solutions. She has, she doesn't even have a grasp of how to even come close to fixing our energy problems. She just thinks we, we, we should just stop emitting carbon. We should just stop using carbon and burning fossil fuels. She doesn't seem to fucking get that if we do that, then we shut the power grid down, effectively sending us back to 1863. Basically the Civil War, the last major event in U.S. history before the Industrial Revolution. That is what we're going back to if we go with Greta Thunberg's little plan. Okay? And please, Greta... Don't, don't, you know, I, I hate to say this, but if white privilege ever is a thing, she's the embodiment of it. So, yeah, time, whatever, whatever you had for prestige is uh, pretty much done. So, yeah. So now Time's Person of the Year has slipped below the World's Greatest Grandpa Award. I mean, if, if Greta had a solution that was at least in the realm of possibility, I'd maybe... I'd maybe... <laughs> take her a little more seriously. But she doesn't. Okay. 
Now, uh, next up is the the top three candidates plan. We're going to start with Elizabeth Warren because I don't know how long it's going to take me to get through this because all three of these have tons of shit under plans and all of them are stupid. Okay, Elizabeth, what Elizabeth will do. Holy shit. Let's just go with these three. Now, along with the Green New Deal, we need a Blue New Deal. Oh, God. Whoever gave women in the government coloring crayons, I want to drag out into the street and shoot. Basically, she says the world's oceans are in crisis. Across the planet, 90% of global fish stocks are fully exploited or overfished. Okay, but we're not the only ones fishing them. Basically, what does she want to do? Um, let's see. Uh, she Once again, America has to flip the bill for 300 billion other people in the world. I don't know why the fuck we have to do that. You know, sorry. And, and they're not going to do anything. Anyway, we rapidly transition our economy to 100% clean energy. Elizabeth, you're older than AOC. I can forgive AOC for being young and stupid and a product of public education. But you're older. You know that 100% clean energy is fucking impossible. We will generate nowhere near enough, especially if everybody's driving electric cars. Like, I did the math, and it's something like we would need just, like, like, just, I forget the number, but it's like the farthest watt you can get. Like, every single, uh, whatever, let's just read this. Offshore wind is more consistent than onshore wind and could provide four times the president capacity of our grid. I'd love to know where she's getting that because wind typically operates at about 20% efficiency. Um, by 2030, offshore wind, er, er, ugh, wind energy development from Maryland to Maine could support more than 3,600 full-time jobs. How? But the Trump administration, the government red tape have, of course, we have to blame Orange Man, have bogged down existing process despite an effort, a decade of effort to block offshore wind farm on the coast of Rain, uh, Rhode Island remains the only offshore wind project operating in the United States. Yeah, they were going to do it in Maine. And then all you rich, liberal, leftist assholes at Martha Vineyard said, oh, not in my fucking scenic view. Uh, my green manufacturing plan calls for a $2 trillion investment. That's half the federal budget. So where the fuck are we going to get that money? The climate crisis is too urgent to let the ultra-wealthy complain about wind turbines getting in the way of their ocean views. Those ultra-wealthy elites are on your side, bitch. My green Apollo program, so now the space shuttle has to be green, commits a half a trillion dollars. Once again, just chalk it up. Um, let's see, uh, I don't know, something about fish populations, who cares? Ex expand community-based seafood markets. Okay, I live in Minnesota, the most landlocked state in the Union. And, of course, it'll co just only cost $5 billion. Where the fuck are we going to get that money? All right. Let's get back to our plans. This this one is retarded. A fair work week for Americans part-time workers. A fair work week. It's a part-time job. Quit and get a real one. Working families across the country are getting crushed. Corporations rake in larger and larger profit. Yes, of course, the evil corporations. Despite the fact that those evil corporations make your life possible, bitch. Uh, wages have stagnated. Funny, I thought they were growing. Uh, 
could have been wrong, but my wages have certainly gone up. Well, the cost of basics like housing, child care, education, health care have gone up. Yeah, because jackasses like you are keep raising taxes. Uh, let's see. Today, a full... Oh, my God. This fucking lie! Today, a full-time minimum wage job can not keep a mother and her child out of poverty and a parent working... Okay. A mom and her child and a parent working a full-time job can't afford a two-bedroom apartment in any... Okay. There is no full-time employment that pays minimum wage. None. Zippo. Zilch. You know why? Because minimum wage jobs are for two groups of people, possibly a third. One, kids just getting their feet wet in the market. Two, Old people looking for something to do through their day and maybe supplement their income. Three, adults looking to earn extra money for Christmas, and then they quit it shortly thereafter. Minimum wage jobs are not supposed to be these fucking career jobs, and you're not supposed to be raising a family on minimum wage jobs. Also, you're not supposed to be raising a family on part-time jobs. My aim as president, thank God you'll never be president because Trump beats every one of these motherfuckers by a good margin in every battleground state. Would be to return power to working families and to pursue an agenda of economic patriotism that puts the interests of American workers ahead of the interests of multinational corporations. Uh, In October, she apparently proposed the most progressive and comprehensive agenda since the New Deal The plan would use all the tools. Yeah, and those unions that the New Deal created, yeah, they've all gone corrupt and are just terrible now. In June, I laid out my economic patriotism plan uh, as I travel the country, blah, 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 blah. Okay, millions of workers face work schedules that can change dramatically week to week or day to day, and workers have almost no advance warning. When you get a job in retail, I'm going to just go with retail and, and and food and restaurant employees. You know that before you accept the job. Okay? Damn near everyone has worked retail at one point in their lives. And I am telling you, you know that going in. You know why? Because, quite frankly, that's the nature of the beast. I just, you know it going in, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. You are free at any time to look for another job and tell your retail job, your part-time bullshit job, to go fuck itself. Okay, 80% of workers have little to no input into their schedules. They shouldn't. They're workers. That's their job. That's their boss's job. 70% are required by their employee to be open and available to work at all times. You are told this before you sign up for the job. When the manager is going over what what the job requirements are, one of the first things they tell you flat out is you need to be open and available to work between X and X. If you can't do that, you hold out your hand, you shake his hand, and you say, sorry, I can't work here because my schedule doesn't allow it. Tough fucking titty. Also, every fucking part-time job I had when I had part-time jobs, when I was still a kid, they always fucking said, when can you work? And I said, I can work from like three to, I, I forget what it was, probably like four to nine or something. That's when I was scheduled. Uh, too often, variable schedules mean that workers have to work the closing shift one day, opening shift the next, with too little time to rest. Cry me a fucking river. I've done it all the time. Employers take advantage of flexibility. Two-thirds of workers study in the retail food services, have less than two weeks' notice of their schedules, and half get less than a week's notice. Tough shit. You know it going in. Plus, these part-time minimum wage jobs ain't exactly hard to get. 
You can quit one and probably have another one within a day. One in four workers are required to clear their schedule to be on call for shifts. They were not guaranteed to get, preventing them from making plans with their families, working another job, or going back to school. Again, this is all information that was told to you before you joined the company. This was gone over in the interview. Um, so, so even when workers turn their whole schedule and families, whole, you're not supposed to be raising a family on part-time retail work. Again, there's how many jobs that have a set schedule prop, you know, actually with the exception of retail and food service, damn near every other business runs on a set schedule. Uh, so let, let me just, uh, go through what, what she wants to do. This is my fair work week plan. Thank God. Thank God. You won't be president grandma. Thank God. Your fucking support is plummeting faster than goddamn fucking kid rocks financial empire. Require employers with 15 or more employees to give two weeks advance notice of work schedules. Employees in retail, food service, cleaning, hospitality, and warehouse. Ind- Most warehouse workers work a set schedule. Any warehouse job I've ever looked at has had a set schedule. You work from this to this. Now, retail, food service, cleaning, I would say, would have a set schedule. And hospitality, like hotels, unfortunately, they can't work a, a set schedule. And I will explain in a minute. We'll get their work schedules at least two weeks in advance. This is pretty standard at any job, even McDonald's. So they can plan their lives. Workers will be compensated for chains within the two-week window and have the right to decline worker work hours that are not listed. They already fucking do. At least any part-time job I had, and they're like, hey, can you work Monday? And I am not scheduled Monday. I'm, Monday, I'm like, nope. Again, I don't know any any company where you can't do that. And again, you can quit at any time. Empower employees to ask schedules that work for them without fear of retaliation. Employees shouldn't lose their job or get hours cut for asking for schedules that accommodate their lives and their families. Uh, employers that employ more than 15 workers will be required to be considered in good uh, faith of their... Uh, this is shittily written. Um, including requests related to the number of hours they want to work and the timing and location of their shifts and provide a justification if they can't accommodate a request. If employee has to change their schedule to accommodate caregiving, educate, who gives a shit? Go to school in your off hours. Again, a part-time job, that's one of the reasons people take it is because of the scheduling freedom. Here's the thing, though. All it takes in a restaurant, and again, I guarantee you she's never fucking run a restaurant, is for one waitress to go down with the flu, and suddenly you have to scramble to find a replacement. That's all it takes. Uh, require employers to offer additional work hours to existing qualified part-time workers before hiring new employees or contractors. Part-time workers are not looking for more hours. Part-time workers want to only work 20 hours a week for whatever reason. Uh, it's a deliberate strategy that giant companies use to preserve their fr- flexibility and squeeze out profits off the backs of workers for not paying benefits. Oh, yes. Because minimum wage part-time workers are sure some career people. It's not like they're kids that don't need fucking benefits because they're under their parents' plan. Consistent with Seattle and Oregon state law, my plan, of course, they're on the leftist coast. And isn't Oregon like the entire, like Portland turning into one big shit-filled shithole? Complete, complete with a porcupine's porcupine's ass full of fucking heroin needles my plan requires and 
aren't people leaving these states? Anyway, uh, they require employers who work, who, with more than 500 employees to ask their workers how many hours they want to work and when they're available and offer additional work to existing part. They, they already do this. Before hiring new workers. Okay, so what happens if everybody at your goddamn company, once again, you can't, you can't force somebody to work. You can't schedule them when you need to schedule them. So basically what this would do, what this plan would do is effectively kill part-time works and then McDonald's would only be run by four or five guys because they'd all be full-time employees. Or automation would go through the roof at McDonald's, let's say. I'm using them as an example because that's how many people's first job. McDonald's, Burger King, Wendy's, what have you. Normally everyone starts in either the fast food industry or retail. Part of the gig. All right, let's go back to our damn plans. Oh, God. This is how many plans she has. (laughs) This is how many fucking plans. Oh, my God. Let's do the ultra-millionaire tax. Basically, this is her bitching and basically um, they would have, she would tax 2% every dollar of net worth above 50 million, 6% above 1 billion, and somehow she thinks this will bring in $3.75 trillion over 10 years. No, it won't. Because they're going to run out of money. Here's the thing that nobody gets. She's talking about net wealth. Do you want to know the average net wealth of your everyday American? Because a lot of people think it's, you know, whatever they've got in the savings account, which let's say is 10 grand. No, it's not. Your average American is worth about a half a million dollars. Now you're going, Dave, what the fuck are you talking about? How is that? The house. When you buy a house, your net worth just jumped up a quarter to a half a million dollars. Then you check chuck in the cars. Then you chuck in other shit like jewelry and crap like that. Suddenly it's not so hard. You know, I don't know if Elizabeth Warren actually thinks this. I don't know if she actually thinks like Jeff Bezos actually has, you know, what is he worth? Like $200 billion? Like he has this in this big vault like Scrooge McDuck? No, Elizabeth. He doesn't. On paper, yes, he's worth $200 billion. But liquid assets? Probably closer to $15 billion. Most of his money comes from Amazon stock. So, and also, the Green New Deal, which you support... Even if you took all of his money away, you wouldn't get anywhere near. Like, this Medicare for all, and no, healthcare is not a human right. Fuck off. You don't have a right to the doctor's service. And uh, I'm going to do two more of these um, because I don't want this to go on. Uh... I do want to do uh, um, Bernie Sanders. But um, this would cost every year $10 trillion, okay? How the fuck are we going to pay for it? Right now, the budget is $4 trillion with everything put together. We spend more on Medicaid, Medicare right now than any other line item in the budget by a factor of about two to one. The military budget is only $850 billion. Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, that dwarfs that motherfucker. And considering every job I've ever worked has had pretty decent health care. 
yeah, I'm sorry if you're too lazy to get a job that provides health care, but um, get off your ass and get a real job. Okay, get rid of the, the Electoral College. Everyone's vote should count equally. It does. In every election, no matter where we live. Well, unfortunately, Warren, I don't know how the fuck you can become a presidential candidate and not know the first thing about our country. We're not a democracy. We're a constitutional republic. So basically, this just goes into getting rid of the Electoral College. Okay. You want to do that, Elizabeth? Okay. All you got to do is pass a constitutional amendment, which the president, believe it or not, has exactly jack and shit to do with. Seriously. All you got to do is pass a constitutional amendment, which is you have to get two-thirds of the House, two-thirds of the Senate, and then 75% of the states to ratify it and hope the Supreme Court doesn't kill it in the process. So, yeah, good luck with that. You couldn't get 75% of the states to agree on pizza toppings. Hell, I don't think you could get two-thirds of the House or the Senate to agree on Chinese food. I'm not talking about a... I'm not talking about a... No, the president has nothing to do. This is the thing a lot of people think, that the president has to sign off on a constitutional amendment. They don't. They have nothing to do with it. Seriously, go look it up. Okay, we are running a little short on time. But let's... You know what? I think... Um, God, Joe... Bernie Sanders is going to take too long. So is Joe Biden. Um... I'm going to pull up that Al Green one really quick. And this will have to be our last story of the day. And... Where is it? Where is it? This is a highly uh, professional uh, podcast. Okay. Here it is. So, another professional dumbass. Representative Al Green, who's a representative I can't remember where, but he's somewhere in California. You know, that entire state that's nothing but a fucking shithole. He's been on a mission to remove Donald Trump from office. No shit. He's been talking about impeaching the president basically since... Donald Trump won the goddamn won the goddamn election. Uh, says he still thinks the push to force the president out of the White House won't end there. Basically, right now the Republicans in the Senate are saying we may not even call anyone. We may just hold the vote immediately. In which case, impeachment's dead on arrival, and they've literally wasted everyone time. Everyone's time. Oh, he's from Texas. Why did I think he was from California? Anyway, um, if the Senate does not convict, that doesn't mean it's that it's over. <sighs> Green, Pelosi, AOC, and every other Democrat in the goddamn House. Unless you are in a super safe district, you are going. This is going to bite you in the ass on election. Right now, more than a few places like Politico are saying the Democrats are on track to lose. 50 seats in the House. Uh, it simply means that for these two charges, the president has not been convicted and he still is in office, which means that he is still subject to impeachment for other charges. Oh, just give it up. Your average American citizen doesn't give a shit. The articles of impeachment presented by a House Democrat leadership are for abuse of power, instruction of Congress, blah, blah, blah. During the hearings leading up to the drafting of the articles, Democrats presented witnesses, including Trump officials, 
and the president, uh, who alleged that the president conditioned Ukraine and a White House meeting to an investigation. Except when under cross-examination, all of them, all of them said, God damn it, all of them said that they actually didn't hear that. The whole narrative collapsed. And even the aggregate on real clear politics, which takes everyone left, right, and center, do you know what's been spiking? Do you know what's been spiking? Opposition to impeachment. Um... Two articles of impeachment presented by the House Democrats are up for abuse of power and obstruction. Uh, Trump pressured the Ukraine to investigate a political rival. No, he really didn't. He just said, no, just whatever. If you get a chance to look into it, look into it. If you don't, eh. Trump has maintained that his conduct was above board and focused on rooting out corruption. Well, Burisma was corrupt. Hunter Joe Biden is on tape as actually holding up money and aid to Ukraine unless they fired the guy that was looking into his son. So right now, if this goes to the Senate and they're going to do one of two things, either they're going to kill it on arrival or Mitch McConnell is going to drag every one of these motherfuckers over the uh, over a bed of coals hotter than the hottest part of hell and Joe Biden's going to be destroyed by it Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren are going to be destroyed by it which means possibly Pete Buttigieg or Andrew Yang are going to be destroyed or are going to be maybe your nominees both of which are going to get ripped apart by Trump you're going to rev up Trump's base all to hell Trump's most likely going to get the centrist vote. Oh, actually, no. Most likely right now he's going to get it. I guarantee you he's going to get it. He'll get a good chunk of Democrats. So unless, unless you want this red wave in 2020, I don't know what your fucking ploy is here. Uh, he became the first Democrat to call for the impeachment in May of 2017. Um, Green brought up the uh, possibility of impeachment. A small number of Democrats supported him. Each time he introduced articles, the number of supporters in the House grew. Yeah, and that number of supporters is dwindling. There has been five now confirmed Democratic representatives, both in district, all in districts that Trump won, that basically have said, no, I am not voting for impeachment. Because they know what they did. They just signed their political death warrant. Uh, their formally vote uh, on the articles this week. Pelosi hasn't scheduled a full house vote on impeachment. But is expected to take place next week. Maybe when this dies, you know, Congress can get back to legislating. The Democrats have a 230 to 197 majority in the House, but charges are almost certain, certain to move on to the Senate once impeachment moves to the upper chamber. A two-thirds majority, uh, basically 67 votes, would be required to remove Trump from office, which is not going to happen because there's 50... They would have to flip 21 senators or something like that. You're not going to get it. Sorry. It's like 20 or 21 senators they'd have to flip. But Green said Trump could still be impeached again if if this dies in the Senate. And maybe that's what McConnell's playing at. Let's just kill it quickly. Let's see if they try again. They do that and they drag this out further. Because remember, Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders are going to have to go back to the Senate and stop campaigning. This is why McConnell may just drag it out. Biden would have to be called in because of his whole part in this. Your three frontrunners are effectively off the campaign tra trail six days a week. 
which leads basically Andrew Yang and Buddha Judge as the only motherfuckers out there campaigning. Neither one of which have a snowball's chance in hell against Trump. Uh, Green sent a memo to other House members urging them to include Trump's racism in articles of... Oh, my God. Whether you or not, you think Trump's racist. It doesn't matter. They can't be included in articles of impeachment. Because even if he was racist as hell, being racist is not illegal. That's just an opinion. You can't be impeached over an opinion. Oh, God. So, yeah, he just said some of Trump's uh, comments. Green suggested this means articles of impeachment focused on Trump's racial remarks and policies could be introduced. On what grounds? Other countries have hate speech laws. In our country, they're ruled unconstitutional. I see that these acts that I've called to their attention were not part of the inquiry. They're part of the investigation. They're not part of the debates. They were not part of the deliberate. Yeah, Green, when this dies, just shut the fuck up and try to beat him in 2020. You'll fail, but that would be how your time being better spent. Green isn't the only member of Congress publicly called for broader articles of impeachment. James Claiborne... He wanted to see some of the allegations outlined in the special counsel's report. Green has also suggested that Trump's past behavior shows he may engage in fresh misconduct that could be impeachable. The president is a recidivist. He doesn't do things once and done. He does things repeatedly. Yeah, because you guys think... You guys would try to impeach him if he didn't tip the fucking waiter at a restaurant. So, uh, basically, the Republican response is a partisan attempt to overthrow a duly elected president and rob the voters of a chance to re-elect him in 2020. Trump and the White House have similarly attacked Green, being motivated by purely partisan concerns. If he plans to introduce his own articles of impeachment again, Green suggested he'll wait for the current charges to play out through the Senate. If convicted and removed from office, this would bring closure? No, it wouldn't. No, it wouldn't. You know, I often criticize Tim Pool for playing the fucking, um, for playing the fucking Civil War card way too, way too, um, often. Let's just see how this is going. Jump to results. It's 58-42. Again, that's a Yahoo poll. The aggregate poll is... 40, 45 to 46. So, yeah. Uh, so, Green's already said that if it doesn't, if this doesn't work, he's going to try again. And he's going to keep trying. Dear people of Texas, can you vote this piece of shit out? For the love of God. Oh, and the people in the Bronx, could you vote AOC out too? While you're at it. All right, uh, that wraps up uh, the first episode of the Dave Norrell Show. I will be back shortly. Again, uh, I'm mostly going, I may do this on YouTube once a week on this channel, but I'm going to mainly be broadcasting the show on Mixer. I have uh, given the link to that channel in the description below. And also, do not forget to check me out on Blair. I'll be there later today to do my first video there. I'm going to be uh doing some exclusive videos on that platform so i will see everyone uh later have a good one